2013, I've had a chance to chat with a few different winemakers and grape growers. It looks like a pretty interesting vintage. How would you describe it and how would you compare it maybe to some recent vintages that you've worked with? It's similar to 2012 in that it's had some nice ripening time, nice warmth. But it was different in the fact that we had a wet spring, which uh, started a little bit of botrytis in some of the grape varieties, Riesling and some of the Chardonnays. So we're seeing a little bit of botrytis in the grapes as they come in, uh, which makes it a little different than last year. Last year, the grapes were very clean because it was a nice, warm, dry year. So this one's a little different. Uh, we think we're gonna make some nice red though. It seems to be tailing off nicely here in the end. I saw you pressing some Chardonnay out there, um, and specifically, it looks like you're bringing that in. Is that going to be a barrel fermented Chardonnay, or is that going to be a stainless steel from Chardonnay? Probably going to be in stainless. We're bringing in some of it earlier, and then we're bringing in a little bit later. We still have some in the field. Uh, it'll be an undetermined location, probably go to a barrel program. We do about half of our Chardonnay is in stainless, and about half is in barrel. It's just kind of a rough proportion. We do some ML with our Chardonnays as well. So I see you guys have harvested some Pinot and it's already getting sorted through. Um, how does Pinot look in vintage 2013? We'll know a little bit better in a couple months, but, but so far it looks fantastic. This year, it, you know, it's completely different growing season than last year. So, you know, we've had some different challenges, you know, with the rain earlier on, um, but, but the last three weeks have been fantastic. We were able to leave them out a little later. Um, you know, we didn't have really any rot in the vineyard, so, you know, kudos to the guys on the spray program because they did a really good job in that. And, you know, right now, you know, it's, it's still fermenting. We're, gonna, we're actually gonna press it off tomorrow. So we're done with the uh, fermentation. And the color looks fantastic. You know, by all accounts, it tastes great so far, and and now we're gonna, just gonna have to do a little magic over the next couple months, and, and I think it's gonna be a great vintage. Coming to red wine, uh, Pinot Noir, you're obviously excited about. Uh, what other red varietals do you think do especially well on your site here? Well, so this is a particularly interesting site because it was planted in 1982 by Cornell as an experimental grape station. You know, we have Old Vine Pinot and Old Vine Merlot, and they're just hitting their stride, so, you know, every vintage is a good vintage for us, um, you know, provided that, that there's no hail or, or a, a freeze at the beginning of the year. And they're a little bit tougher than most of the other reds and some of the newer reds in the vineyard. So um, they weather a little bit better, but they also produce a little bit more. I actually saw a little bit of uh, punching down being done before and a little bit of foot trotting uh, mm -hmm. practice we're familiar with. Sure. Uh, so what's the, what's the specifics of that process? Why do you choose to do that with your Pinot? Yeah, so as far as our uh, Pinot Noir process is concerned, we actually keep the stems included. And that op offers us a little more tannin component in the finished wines as well as a little more spiciness to the mid palate. And with that, the first couple days of um, traditionally punching down with our stainless steel frisbee disc style punch down tool, it's a, a bit too rigid. Uh, so we prefer to uh, trot in there with uh, food grade boots that we sanitize beforehand. And uh, uh, our wonderful help has been able to get their I Love Lucy grape stomping experience on. So you're hand harvesting all of your Pinot Noir and when it comes back to the winery itself, you guys have a sorting table set up. Can you lead us through uh, the process there? What are you looking for? We receive the fruit here in the picking lugs and the sorting table is a vibrating sorting table. So it allows us to shake through a lot of the um, a lot of the undesirable. So the wine industry calls it mob, material other than grapes. So any leaf material, any uh, petioles that are left behind, but also more importantly, the undesirables when it comes to winemaking. So uh, anything that's been impacted by sour rot, either from bird uh, pressure or from uh, insect pressure in the vineyard, and then also anything that's been impacted by botrytis, which uh, on the Pinot side of things is, is much more undesirable than on the Riesling side of things. On the Pinot front, it actually strips color out of our Pinot Noir. So we want to remove that as part of the mix so we have clean, nice clean fermentations to really showcase the fruit component that's in our wines. So Justin, see you uh, bringing in some Merlot and doing a little bit of hand sorting. Obviously, harvest is upon us. Um, how do you feel about the 2013 vintage? Um, what's looking exceptional? What are you really excited about? 2013 vintage has been really interesting. Uh, it's a lot of starts and stops and pauses. 
the grapes uh, started off uh, with a lot of disease pressure and then we got lucky and the weather broke and we've had three, four weeks of great dry, warm weather and seen a lot of uh, ripening happening. Uh, you mentioned the Merlot, that's on a great site and it came in almost as ripe as last year which was a bit of a surprise because this has been a cooler vintage compared to 2012 when it was really hot. In the Finger Lakes in general, are there what type of disease pressure is there? Are there certain things that grape growers and winemakers have to be really careful about, especially around harvest? Every vintage is different, especially here in the Finger Lakes, but uh, botrytis and sour rot are the two biggest challenges, I feel like. Um, this year, sour rot's been present in a lot of varieties, and there's always the threat of botrytis, so that's part of the reason we hand sort almost everything that comes in to guarantee to the best of our ability that we don't introduce those into our wines. So yeah. Sarah, we're here on the west side of Seneca Lake uh, at your vineyard and uh, I'm just curious, I'm seeing harvesters out in the fields. What's coming in right now? Uh, what are you harvesting? Uh, we're bringing in Cabernet Franc, uh, Riesling. We've completed our Merlot, Merlot harvest. We've already completed in the last couple weeks our uh, Gruner Veltliner and Sauvignon Blanc. Mm, that's interesting. Both look really nice, the Pinot Noir, it looks wonderful. But you mentioned also Cabernet Sauvignon. So what's the sort of process uh, from harvest to getting it you know, into the cellar? What are the typical steps that you follow next? We bring the fruit to the winery, we crush it. It goes into a about a seven ton tank, single steel tank where it's fermented. And that includes uh, punching down or, or uh, pumping over every day or every other day. Then it's pressed off the skins and uh, settled in a tank for several days and then, then racked so it can sit on the, the fine leaves for a period of time. And then after that it goes into oak barrels, combination of new, which might be 10, only 10 to 20 percent new barrels and then uh, older French oak barrels. So I saw you recently uh, harvesting a little bit of Merlot, which you guys were doing by hand and getting some really nice bunches. Um, I'm seeing a mix of mechanical harvesting and hand harvesting. Um, you know, what do you want to say about yeah, that? For us personally, uh, we like to the mechanically harvested fruit. Um, it gives us a lot of versatility as far as how quickly we can get the fruit in. So we got a lot of changing conditions here. Um, we'll have some mornings where we got some dew on the vines. Um, so our windows of opportunity when the fruit is at the right temperature and it's dry are, are somewhat limited. Um, so we like the ability to get a lot of fruit when the conditions are right. Uh, so we do a lot of sampling, uh, find when the fruit is at its best, its peak of ripeness, and then uh, we can get a lot, of, uh, a lot of fruit harvested quickly with the harvester. We get the fruit right from the vineyard to the press pad. I mean sometimes within a half an hour it's in the press. Where we do some uh, hand harvesting uh, is in the red vinifera. Uh, Pinot Noir, we always hand pick that. Uh, it's a little, just uh, benefits from the little gentler handling that we get from hand picking. And then if we've got any kind of fruit variability in any of the red vinifera, we are able to do some, uh, some hand sorting as we pick with hand picking. Uh, what we prefer to do is throughout the growing season we'll do several passes by hand through the vineyard and drop fruit if we see anything. A year like this where uh, we don't have a, a lot of growing conditions with, with some rain involved and everything, we'll, sometimes we'll drop some fruit in the red vinifera so we do that by hand. But we like to do our sorting in the vineyard and then get everything really, really uniform and then pick with the machine when conditions are perfect. So uh, of, the, of the wines or uh, of the grapes that are still in the vines, like your Cab Franc, what are you most excited to bring in? What do you think uh, in terms of reds and whites that are still hanging, are you, what are you most excited about? Well, it's hard not to be most excited about Riesling, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. The sugars are a little slower coming around. That's okay. I mm -hmm. think there's great balance with acidity in these Rieslings that are coming in. I think the flavors have developed at lower sugar levels, and I think that's partly a reflection of the slower ripening that we've seen this year. It's hard not to be most optimistic about Riesling in most every year as we just brought Gewürztraminer in. Uh, absolutely beautiful, some of the best Gewürztraminer that we've seen. And I think uh, Lemberger, absolutely beautiful flavors in our Lemberger. I think that'll be coming off within the next week. I'm hearing a lot about this vintage. How do you compare 2013? Quite a bit cooler growing season than we've had for the past three at least through the summer. It was also a pretty wet summer, but it gradually dried out, I guess, as the season went on. 
had just a beautiful September in terms of ripening. And in some ways, I think it was one of the best Septembers that we've seen, even though maybe some of the summers were superior in some of the other years. So nice uh, sunny days, low rainfall, um, slow ripening, uh, but nice steady progression. Uh, so we've seen very good quality, I think, in what we've taken in so far. Mm -hmm. I see you're bringing in some Riesling. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So where are all of your vineyards? We have uh, nine different growers on Cayuga Lake and Seneca Lake on west and east side of Seneca and the west side of Cayuga. About 21 different blocks and uh, pretty unique little mesoclimates and we like to ferment them all separately and keep them separate as long as we can. That's great. That's really yeah. exciting to see yeah. uh, more and more producers yeah. focusing on specific terroir and specific yes. vineyard sites. and how they sort of express a difference. Yeah. What are some of the yeah. oldest vines that you have on this vineyard? We work with um, some from actually the late 70s. Wow. Uh, from uh, the grower that's adjacent right here. Uh, it's not part of this winery anymore. It's an independent grower. He does a really good job. He sells some, to some pretty well-regarded wineries. He has Riesling that goes back to the 70s, uh, right on up through to um, about eight years ago. His newest plan is there. So with regard to Riesling, uh, single vineyard expressions seems to be a growing uh, trend here in the Finger Lakes. Um, what is the intention there? What, what is it that you're trying to do? Are you trying to single out certain sites and seeing what they've got or are you trying to create something new altogether? Our whole intent with our single vineyard Rieslings is to capture the personality and the character of each individual site. Um, we work with you know, half a dozen growers um, and in some of these farms there are, are a half a dozen different blocks of Riesling that we track separately and handle separately and every one is different. Uh, so our challenge as a winemaker, as winemakers, is to identify the personality of each block and figure out how to best translate that personality and that character into the glass. So does that always translate into dry Riesling? Is it sometimes off dry? Uh, characters, characteristically, how does that often work out in terms of the style? Oh, it works out differently. Um, we have single vineyard Rieslings really across the board in terms of style and structure and balance, ranging from um, some of these vineyards which are tight and lean and herbal um, and fairly dry to other ones that are just explosively fruity and really crunchy acidity and pretty low alcohol. I'm always curious about um, you know, what varietals are, you know, winemakers and grape growers are most passionate about. So why don't you talk a little bit about Gewürztraminer. The Gewürz is particularly happy for us because last year we actually sold most of our Gewürz, actually the last two years, because we just weren't seeing the sales of Gewürz that we thought we, that the vineyard could support. And the world is loving our Gewürz, and so we had to make a lot of it, so it was really exciting. <laughs> On the farm, what are some of the older vines that you have? What are sort of your, your prized jewels in terms of, you know, your greater, your great blocks or your, your better yeah. vineyards? We actually released a wine from 2012 that was 40-year-old vines from our old west block. Uh, that vineyard was planted by Gold Seal Vineyards, Guy DeVoe and Charles Fournier, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful Riesling vineyard. Um, our Chardonnay will hit 40 years this year, so that'll be kind of exciting, and we may play with a single vineyard um, from, from that vineyard, a single vineyard bottling. And then our baby Gewürz that we planted against all advice and with everybody telling us never do it, nobody likes Gewürz, they don't drink it, they won't buy it. Uh, we planted in 1994, so these are 20 year old vines and we have a single vineyard lot going with that. Um, so that'll be kind of exciting. So Kim, uh, we're here at Bloomer Creek and I see you're bringing in some Gewürztraminer, uh, fresh from your vineyards. Uh, what's special about this particular harvesting of Gewürztraminer? This is our second picking. The early vi the young vines came in at 22 bricks, the older vines uh, of 24 bricks or a little riper. They're very ripe, very high quality, very clean grapes uh, with very good flavor development. Uh, and we still have Gewürztraminer in the field and will continue to pick. We generally like to make multiple pickings, different degrees of ripeness. Uh, and if there is botrytis development, uh, we will take that into consideration and keep those separate. So anyway, our, our custom is to make multiple pickings. So we saw Gewürztraminer, but what else have you harvested already and what's still hanging? We're finished with Pinot Noir, which also came in uh, at, with a very nice uh, degree of ripeness, very good flavor development. Uh, we're quite happy with the harvest. I think a season like this where we get more typical weather 
uh, more typical fall weather gives very high quality fruit, very good flavor development, very bright fruity flavors and retains acidity. Uh, so a season like this is exciting to me. We'll know when we have the wine.